What's up everybody, Superbooks fan here from Mustang with the update number 41 on this Friday. So, what's new with the Mustang? Well, uh, I actually, this past weekend, took on a little road trip to Columbus, Ohio to do uh, two car reviews that uh, you'll be seeing, not next week, but the following two weeks. And uh, both are very cool cars. One probably very exciting for you guys. The other was very exciting for me and hopefully for some of you guys as well. And um, so anyway, but that's, uh, that's what I was doing. I was doing two car reviews this past weekend. Anyway, the reason why I'm saying this is I did this little road trip and uh, someone actually asked me uh, to do this. And what I did was, you know, with this Cobb tune that I have on this car, there's a specific eco map. So if you hit cancel on the cruise control stock, on the fly you can switch your maps for whatever map you want to do. You know, there's high performance, low boost maps. There's all kinds of stuff. And so map five is the eco map. I put it on that eco map and what it does is essentially limits your boost to 8 PSI, which isn't very fun and takes away some of your passing power, but if you're just trying to hypermile and, you know, get really good fuel economy, it helps a lot because I average normally around 30 miles per gallon in the Mustang on the highway, which is already very good on its own, but when I put it in that eco mode and I did this little trip, um, over the course of, I think, 220 miles or so, I averaged 34.2 miles per gallon which is spectacular. I mean, considering the BRZ, the best it could eke out back in the day was 39 MPG, and that was a 200 horsepower car that was you know, almost 600 pounds lighter. This thing's heavier, way faster, and much more comfortable, and you know, all that kind of stuff, and I still was able to get 34. Very, very impressive. I mean, you know, there's other car companies with tiny little compact cars that, you know, brag about, we got 34 MPG, and like, this is doing it with all the performance, all the creature comforts and everything else. It's one heck of a motor from Ford. I got I got to really just, it's amazing. So that was the big thing I wanted to tell you guys this week, 34 MPG. Um, those of you that have EcoBoost as well, let me know what your kind of MPGs are. I know a lot of people said, and I also experienced this, that it was kind of low whenever you first got the car, but then it got better. Uh, I know mine, once I hit about 12,000 miles or so, that's whenever it kind of got broken in and was uh, better with the fuel economy. But so uh, awesome to hear that. Uh, other quick little updates. I'll actually be doing another road trip again this weekend. This one is not car related or channel related. Uh, just going on a fun little weekend trip. And I'll probably, I'm thinking about doing some vlogging with my wife with that. I know some of you said you were interested in doing and you know, having me do more vlogs and stuff just about my everyday life or you know what what's going on with me. And so I'm considering doing stuff like that just because I really want to try and bring more videos to you guys. I know, you know, it's always every week there's a car review, every week there's a weekly update, and then there's normally some stuff hopefully interspersed in uh, throughout the week as well, a little bit here and there. But I would like to get, you know, maybe at least three to four videos every single week. If not, maybe even five would be cool, but we'll see. But I'm just, I'm working hard to try and, you know, get this stuff out as quickly as I can. Um, I'm generating a little bit of a backlog as far as I've been reviewing lots of cars recently and I'm doing stuff now that probably according to the current schedule won't be going live till the middle of October so that's good I'm hoping to build up this backlog so that in the middle of winter whenever it's snowing around here I can still be uploading videos of cool cars for you guys and not be like getting you know frostbite while trying to do it so that's good but if I get a large enough backlog uh, with some of these you know trips that I'll be doing here coming up in the fall I may try and be able to do two car reviews a week you know post two up just a matter of you know editing uh, a lot of people don't realize, I was actually talking to the owner of the car that I was reviewing uh, just yesterday about how long it takes me. It normally takes me between 8 and 12 hours to edit a car review. Uh, a lot of that, I mean, a good couple hours sometimes for just finding the right music, but after that, just editing and everything normally takes at least 8 hours. So it's a long and involved process. You know, each car review normally takes me about two days to produce with one day just being dedicated to filming everything for the car and then the second day being for editing it. So it's, it's quite an involved process, but I'm gonna try my hardest uh, to try and get more up for you guys. And so, uh, but yeah, that's it as far as all the uh, updates on the Mustang and everything. Uh, I also have another new product that I'll be reviewing soon, the Steeda stuff. I haven't uh, been able to get installed yet. Hopefully that'll be here within the next week because I have some other stuff coming for the Mustang. Uh, later on down the road this month that I also want to, uh, you know, put on the car and show you guys. But uh, I have a new product, a dash cam that was actually sent to me recently. And so I'll be using that here on my little road trip this weekend and doing a little bit of a review of that. And that'll be going live early next week as well. So be on the lookout for that. But that's it for all the updates, guys. I'll send them back to me at the news desk for this week's news. 
Right, for this week's news, the first thing is some news about the 2016 BRZ. Now, we know that it's going to be available in a new limited edition uh, with a, a lighter blue color with black wheels and whatnot. And we also just uh, found out two things that are changed on the BRZ for 2016 for all the standard models. The first is that the screen, the touchscreen, there's going to be a new touchscreen the head unit that's going to come standard in all of them. It's a 6.2 inch touchscreen. Uh, now the previous one was a 6.1 inch, so we went up a whole 0.1 inches on the uh, touchscreen. Also, a review camera is standard now, which is cool. This has you know apps on it, this new head unit and stuff, but largely the same. Um, and then the other change is that they cut the price of it by $300 on both the limited and the uh, standard model. So the base model is $26,190, and the limited is $28,190. So that's uh, the new thing. So at least they're lowering the price a little bit. Uh, you know, the, hopefully the head unit will be a little bit better than the previous one. But again, no real changes. Um, you know, what we've been hearing is next model year we'll get about 10 more horsepower and a light interior and exterior refresh. So, you know, slightly different headlights and taillights, maybe a little different body panels. That's about it. So um, again, but I wouldn't hold my breath because we've been hearing it'll be next year, it'll be next year, it'll be next year. So who knows when it's actually coming, but that's what we're getting for 2016. And um, so for some more exciting news of some stuff that's actually awesome and really coming uh, soon. First, uh, okay, so Bugatti is also getting in with this whole Gran Turismo, Vision Gran Turismo cars that are all, you know, very far-fetched and not even close to reality. Um, but the funny thing is Bugatti officially revealed their car that they made for the game. And the crazy thing is it actually looks like it's somewhat plausible as a production car. And a lot of people are thinking they're using this as a teaser for the upcoming Bugatti, Bugatti Chiron or whatever they're going to be calling it. And um, so it's interesting though. We have some cool cues here. Looks like it's going to have the Audi, you know, TFT display like all the Lamborghinis and stuff have these days. And, uh, you know, it's going to have obviously it's a, the slightly angrier look, but still very similar in shape to the Veyron, which is what we've been hearing before as well. This is, of course, a race prep version, but if you ditch that rear wing and the aggressive chin splitter and side skirts, what you have is probably pretty close to what the new Veyron is going to look like. And so that is awesome to see that. We also uh, just got a rumor here saying that uh, it's rumored that the new Bugatti is going to cost $2.5 million, which is about a million more than the previous version. But hey, in this kind of hypercar world, who cares what the price is anyway? So uh, cool to see that. Uh, some other super high-end news. Uh, a couple of cars that were teased uh, that are going to be coming at some point here during the Frankfurt Motor Show in the next week. Um, and the first is Rolls-Royce teased their Dawn. Um, and all we see here is a few little plaques that say, uh, you know, it's a new model of the car. Um, and some people are saying that it's going to be, uh, you know, a four passenger convertible version of the Ghost and Wraith. So now we know it will be called the Dawn. And uh, so that'll be their cheapest convertible and, um, you know, still be a very, very nice uh, car <laughs> for any price. And so very cool to see that. Other teasers, uh, Lamborghini just posted a video on YouTube that just, it's a little quick teaser and it says the sky will never be the same. I don't know if that's a teaser that they're also bringing the Aventador SV Roadster to Frankfurt. Uh, I'm assuming it'll be there, but this sounds like it's something new, but we know they're not really bringing anything until Geneva, which isn't until next year. So I don't know what that's all about. Uh, it could just be them bringing the Aventador Roadster, uh, the SV version, but We'll have to wait and see, but it's uh, something up Lamborghini sleeve as well. And for a very cool uh, special edition car that was just revealed this week, Aston Martin officially unveiled the uh, James Bond edition of the DB9 GT. So uh, they're celebrating the release of Spectre, which is coming out very soon for the UK. Us here in America have to wait an extra month or so, um, but it's coming out soon. And so there's this Bond edition of the DB9 GT. Now we know that the DB9 is on its way out. Even in Spectre, James Bond drives the new DB10, which we won't be getting, but the DB11 will be coming uh, eventually here in the next year or so. And anyway, they're trying to you know sell DB9s here, the last few that they can. So they're sprucing them up with uh, some cool special editions. And I'm a sucker for anything James Bond. So even though this is just you know one of those like dying breaths of you know the last versions of the DB9 here, I still think it's awesome. 
awesome. Um, you know, it's uh, got all kinds of bonds, sill plates, and has a special startup screen. All that really cheesy stuff that some people might not go for. I totally go in for that kind of stuff. I think it's awesome. And so it also they also give you an Omega uh, James Bond watch, which is a beautiful timepiece, in addition to some nice luggage and some other stuff. It comes in the special color, special wheels, yada, yada, yada. Um, it's kind of interesting though. I mean, obviously, like I said, they're trying to get rid of these last DB9 GTs that they have, but it would have made more sense I think, to just put all this stuff on a Vanquish. That's what I would rather have as a James Bond enthusiast. But um, cool to see they're doing it with the DB9 nonetheless. Still, they say it's the fastest DB9 they've ever made. Another high-end car that was officially unveiled this past week was the S-Class Cabriolet by Mercedes-Benz. And um, it looks exactly how you would expect it to look from all the teasers and stuff. And, uh, you know, it has a canvas roof still, which I thought they might you know, want to go for a hard top finally. But no, it's still canvas roof. Um, it has the air scarf that all the other Mercedes uh, convertibles have, which is very cool. The cool little thing about this, though, well, uh, one, first for the mechanical thing, they now come with a 9-speed automatic transmission from the non-AMG models. The AMG models still have the old-fashioned old-fashioned seven-speed dual-clutch speed shift transmission, but this new nine-speed fully automatic is what's going to be in the non-AMG versions. But the really cool thing is they have a new thermotronic climate feature, which uh, they says it takes complete control of the HVAC system, and based on whether, whether the roof is down or up, it kind of tailors everything, especially for when the roof is down. Um, it has 12 sensors and 18 actuators, and the sensors include sensors for the interior and exterior temperature, of course, but also solar radiation, air quality, and dew point. This car measures the dew point and all this other stuff, and that's just a few of them. That's not all of the sensors. So it just measures everything, and then depending on the solar radiation and everything, it gives you just the right amount of air conditioning and just the right amount of wind scarfing or whatever it is to just uh, cater you and, uh, you know, move you along in the utmost of luxury uh, drop-top motoring. So awesome to see that and uh, I didn't see any prices listed here but um, you know I'm sure it's gonna be expensive people that are, can afford it won't care anyway so it's not even worth discussing so that is that um, other convertibles uh, bad news you know I was getting really excited about Honda bringing this s660 uh, to the US you know they're thinking about calling it the s1000 and it would be a little bit faster and be a competitor to the Miata essentially and now, um, according to one of the uh, high up guys here, it's America Honda Executive Vice President John Mendel. He said that he wouldn't put his chips on the S660 coming to America. He said that they evaluated the S660 for the US, and it's such a small car. Now, to put it in perspective, they said that this car basically comes in, it's somewhere in between a Miata and a Smart 4 2. So it's, it's smaller than a Miata by a good amount. I mean, so it's a tiny little K car. And so he said, for that reason, it doesn't make sense to bring it to the U.S. Who knows if it would even pass our safety standards, let alone, you know, everyone wants power and whatnot. So he said it doesn't make sense to bring that here. But what was really interesting about this interview, though, is he's talking more about stuff they want to bring to the U.S. market. He said they want to bring sports cars. And the reason why, well, he said they're working on a design study, which they said could be either a revival of the S2000 or that baby NSX that we've seen in patent filings and, you know, been uh, spied and whatnot. But anyway, um, what they're saying is they said that the dealerships, the Honda dealerships are the ones that are saying, we need a sports car again. It's been way too long since the S2000. Uh, Civic SIs are cool, but they want a dedicated sports car, and the CRZ with its 130 horsepower isn't cutting it. So um, that's the dealers. They're putting the pressure on everyone. The executives want it. The dealers want it. So they're going to make something happen here. And so what happens, we'll see. But um, they said that exactly what they want is they want a sports car, an actual true sports car. They said that dealers want one with a retractable hardtop, and they want it to ha be high horsepower in the $20,000 range, which sounds a little unobtainable. Um, but... It could be very possible. Just toss the Type R motor if you want high horsepower, 300 horsepower there. You know, retractable hardtop, uh, something small that, you know, was cheap on the inside but has all that stuff. I think that would definitely sell like hotcakes. The dealers want it, so hopefully it happens here. So uh, interesting developments there on that. Uh, other stuff, I mentioned the CRZ. Um, they just got a refresh in Japan. We'll be getting the same refresh here in the fall for the CRZ here in America. And uh, don't get your hopes up, though. It still has the same exact powertrain. They always neglect the powertrain. That's the one thing everyone wants is more power. They do everything but. 
Anyway, um, so it has a nice exterior refresh here, some cool looking headlights, and a light interior refresh, and that's just about it. But I mean, we did hear that a new CRZ, an all new sports car version is coming sometime down the road, but for now we have to make do with this refresh. A car that we don't get here in the US anymore, the Chrysler 300 SRT, um, has just been updated for the rest of the world. So they formally left last year whenever they did the restyle for the new 300, but it's lived on in other parts of the world, and um, so those in Australia, Japan, South Africa, South Korea, and a few other places can still go to the Chrysler dealership and buy a brand new 300 SRT. Um, and it's crazy, they're actually putting a lot of effort into it, and so it's kind of surprising they don't bring them to America anymore, but um, they said, you know, it's got these new uh, LED running lights in the front and uh, new grill, things like that. And, um, you know, it has the same horsepower and stuff like that, but it's cool to see they're doing the refresh. It's just sad we don't get it anymore. Apparently, what they've heard is that um, Dodge is now the performance part of FCA, and so, you know, they can't have performance Chrysler products. Another new performance sedan, the 2017 Audi S4, was spied completely in camouflage running through the Alps and looks very similar to the A4 that already has been revealed, um, except, you know, slightly more aggressive front bumper, headlights, taillights, all that kind of stuff. And uh, they're saying it's going to have more power, of course, but still going to be a uh, turbocharged V6. Uh, no surprises here. They're saying 340 horsepower or more, and uh, should be a pretty good performing vehicle. Uh, they said it'll also be lighter than the previous version, so that'll help as well. So cool to see that. Other uh, sports sedan news, uh, Jaguar officially uh, said the prices for the XE and the XF. So the XE is going to start at $35,895 for the base one, of course, so the faster XES and stuff is gonna be much more than that. But the cool thing is they actually slashed the price on the XF. So the XF used to be like 57 grand and now it's 52. So they've cut it by about $5,000. And, um, you know, so that's good there because the XF is a very compelling car for the money as well. So uh, I think those are great price points for both of those and hopefully they start selling well. Another car that's uh, coming very soon, the Tesla Model X. Uh, Elon Musk in recent tweets officially announced that the car is going to be brought uh, and delivered to customers September 29th, almost two years after they originally wanted to bring them out and uh, they're finally coming out here now. And we have some more information about them because uh, I guess some people have been able to place their orders. And um, they said, Elon Musk also tweeted that uh, the, te the Model X will be about $5,000 more than the Model S. So uh, it's about comparable. Now you can load them up like they're, people are freaking out because the top of the line Model X is like $132,000 for the Signature Series and uh, that has the fastest uh, performance for the most part and it's totally pimped out inside and has the autonomous driving all that kind of stuff. But there are a few uh, interesting and cool options you can get. So there's a ludicrous speed mode which we've heard about before in the Model S. It's going to be available in the, in the Model X here and it's going to be able to get to 0 to 60 in 3.2 seconds they're saying and run the quarter mile in 11.7 which is uh, very fast indeed. Um, and so, but standard equipment, there's, it's still gonna have, uh, you know, the Falcon doors come on all of them, uh, which is pretty crazy, and, you know, sensors so they don't, like, open in your garage and slam into the roof and all that kind of stuff. I'm interested to see how those rear doors actually end up working, but um, cool to see that. And a couple stories from Ford this week. First exciting thing is uh, there was just spied an ST version of the Fusion. So the Ford Fusion is going to be getting a restyling for the 2017 model year. Have some refreshed, uh, you know, styling a little bit here and there. And I showed a couple weeks ago a leaked image of what it looks like. And now we see an ST version. You can tell it has those fangs on the front similar to the, uh, you know, other ST models. And... Um, so it looks pretty cool. We got quad exhaust in the back and obviously it's camouflage so you can't see a whole lot here. But um, what they're hearing is the rumors are there's, it's going to have the 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6 engine. They said they're shooting for over 300 horsepower and it's going to be all wheel drive, which is awesome. Uh, they said it's going to have a six speed automatic transmission. No word as to whether or not there'll be a manual. Fingers crossed, uh, hopefully it'll happen, but for now, um, just automatic and three, over 300 horsepower from uh, an all-wheel drive system as well. So uh, that's cool. I'm surprised that they're only doing 300 horsepower from a 2.7 because we all know the Mustang EcoBoost is 310 horsepower with a 2.3 liter EcoBoost. So this motor has much more potential. So maybe they'll put the Mustang motor in, or I'm guessing that if they're using the 2.7, we're going to be closer to 350 than uh, 300. So... Cool to see that, and uh, no word as to when it's actually going to be coming, but I'm, I'm just going to have to guess and say next year. 
Other Ford news is uh, they just officially unveiled the 2016 Ford Explorer Platinum, which um, has an interesting thing called Nirvana leather in it. Um, which is uh, cool to see. Uh, it's totally pimped out. This is basically the top of the line version of the Explorer. We've already seen the Explorer, so that's nothing new. It's just the new trim package essentially here and uh, looks good, but it's $52,600, which is pretty, uh, pretty high, but a very nice uh, SUV for the money. It has LED headlights and all kinds of stuff. It has the 365 horsepower, three and a half liter EcoBoost V6 as well. And um, so it should be one heck of an SUV. So Cool to see that. Now, the Volvo S90 that was just spied, and I just talked about that last week, um, apparently there was a die cast of it made, and it leaked out somehow. And here's an image of what it looks like. Again, looks like a sedan version of the new XC90, like we expected. Looks good. Should be very uh, futuristic and high-tech, and uh, great to see that. Another car. Last week, we just saw spy shots of the Toyota Prius on camouflage, the new one. And uh, now we have a really clear look at the front end, and it does look slightly better than the other spy shots, but still uh, not the prettiest of cars. And uh, yeah, that's a face only a mother could love, I think. But um, hey, it's, it is what it is. They've never been really attractive vehicles. And so this follows in that line and, uh, you know, continues the tradition. So, um, but I mean, you know, they do look aggressive and uh, I can't think they kind of fit in with the current Toyota and Lexus styling. So it uh, totally makes sense and I'm sure they'll still sell very well. They said it'll have about a 35 mile EV range now over the like 10 or 11 miles that you can currently do in the current Prius. So it'll be an improved car in every way. And uh, so they'll be, those will be officially unveiled I think here in the next week or two. So uh, you'll be able to see inside and out all the details very soon. And going out on a high note with uh, another very exciting car, not. Uh, the new Chrysler Town and Country was just spied. Um, it's a minivan. Uh, they said one of the cool things is it's gonna have foot-operated rear doors, so similar to the stuff you see on the Ford Escape and stuff like that where you swipe your foot underneath the tailgate for it to open. They said it's gonna do that for the rear doors, which I'm sure will be a godsend for mothers uh, with their hands full and stuff like that. So great to see that. Um, they said it'll also have a built-in vacuum and, uh, and it'll have USB ports and charging ports for every row of seating and things like that. So it should be a cool little you know, road trip vehicle or whatever. But uh, that is that. So that's it for all the news this week, guys. So I'll send back to me in the car. Alrighty, so I'll leave you guys with a nice little acceleration here, like I always do. Oh, yes, sir. Nice and quick. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next week. Take care.